Valley, yeah. and that played a key role. So Pat, where are you? Come on, mate. Up buddy. Okay. First of all, I'd just like to say, never give up and never give in. Right? Never give up and never give in. Remember, our parents, and I apply this to most of the people here, fought a world war. And they won it. And we're their children today. And all this talk about environmentalism, the people of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, where are they? They're here. That's where it came from. And today they're ramming this stuff down our throat as if we're not concerned about the environment. Everybody here is. We know it. Now, last week we won a significant battle with Gosford Council. Yay! Yeah. But it's not the end of the war. It's a small step. We need your support. There's another big rally, we hope, up at uh, Lake Macquarie. The dates will be announced, but it'll be just two weeks out from the election for the council elections. And you've got to work on your local councillors, you've got to work on your local MPs. Where's Darren Weber? Is Darren here today? Can anyone hear him? Is he here? I can't hear you, Darren. Uh, I invited Craig Thompson. Craig Thompson, is Craig here? Craig. No. But sea level rise is so terrible, we're all going under. They're not here. He went that way with his credit card. They're out there. I think they're up in the mountains, are they? The sea level rise issue. Gosford Council said there were 9,000 properties. <laughs> they sent out notices to 9,000 properties telling them they're going under. And what that meant was they put that notice onto their property planning certificates. And if you want to sell your property, it's attached to the contract of sale. So anyone selling a home in that Gosford area up until Tuesday of this week, they had that information, that sea level rise information that said... This land is potentially affected by sea level rise of 0.9 of a metre by the year 2100. Not only was it invalid in law, it was absolute yes, right. bullshit. Yes. And the reality oh. is they've got a council report that says 4,109 properties will be affected by a 1% flood by the year 2100. Now, a 1% flood means there's a 1 in 100 chance that they might be affected in the year 2100. But the key word they left out was likely to be adversely affected. So that narrows it again, because some of these properties that they say will be affected by this 0.9 of a metre, they'll actually become waterfront properties. It's not going to do away with the value of the property. They'll get a slight increase, perhaps. They'll still have the roads. But what Gosford Council also wanted to do was to spend $265 million plus another $30 million to raise the land in Gosford Harbour so they could put 800 units out over the water in an area that's the most flood prone area. But they wanted to tell 9,000 property owners that their properties were now valueless about $2 billion worth of private and public infrastructure and property. This isn't about sea level rise and it's not about climate change. What this is all about is taking away your property rights, taking away your democratic rights. And don't forget it because if you've got the time, go to the internet Tuesday this week, the Productivity Commission hearing, and you'll see it in the papers that have been presented by people like Professor Bruce Tom. We need a new style of government. They want a new type of government that will control land because they don't believe that we are using the land appropriately. That's what this is all about. This is just a massive scare campaign, and the only way you can beat it is to 
Get in touch with your local MPs. Get in touch with your local councillors. Talk to them. Tell them that you're not happy about it. Turn up at the council meetings. They're only just down here. Speak on it anything you can and always speak against it. <laughs> and make sure you let them know that, they, that you're angry about it. But you've got to do that, and you've got to do it. If you don't do it, you're, they think you're a walkover. Yeah. So that's how we managed to win that one battle, and it took two years. So this is going to be long, it's got more to go, but finally it will turn around. Now here in Wyong, what you're really looking at is thousands of homes that could be affected by a one in 100 year flood and they've been there for a long time but where's the money gone into protecting those homes are there any levees are there any barriers to the sea have they got anything that that really will help those properties today where we might get flooding they're talking about 90 years time they're taking the they're taking your eye off the real ball and that is what they can do for those properties today. They don't want to talk about that. So that's the reality. And on the beaches, all of our beaches up and down the New South Wales coast now, if there's coastal erosion which occurs at, at the height of that storm, the SES is no longer permitted to protect homes. That's in the state disaster plan. That went into the state disaster plan in 2009, the previous Labor government. The current state Liberal government have been in for over a year and they haven't made that simple change. Get a move on, Barry. So there's a lot to be done and it's got to come from people like you. Small number of people here today, it's not. It's a massive number of people. And every person counts. That's how we were successful in Gosford. It wasn't one person, it was hundreds of people, all doing whatever they can. So I encourage you all to get on the internet, become informed, contact your local councillors, send them text messages. They've all got mobiles. Get their email address. They've all got email addresses. Send them an email. But in particular, get on to those local, state, Liberal MPs. They won this seat from David Harris, Darren Webber, and David Harris, when, when this became a big issue, what David Harris said, we've got to draw a line in the sand. And I said to him, what side of the, of the line am I on? And he also went on to say, you took the risk when you bought that property. We all bought these properties quite legally. The council's been collecting rates. The state government's been getting land tax and stamp duty. The federal government, the coastal strip, is responsible for about 85% of our economic activity. All the GST that they collect, it comes from mainly from these areas, not from mining, it comes from the work that just the average person does with their hands and in the offices just the average workers. There's plenty there to make good any major risks. And the big risks that we face now with sea level rise, as was stated earlier, are these big storms. And that's it. And they've, in, in 40, 50, 100 years, they still haven't been able to put anything in place to protect our properties from that. So when they start talking about sea level rise by the year 2100, they're just full of crap. They couldn't care less about us. It's only about power and the loss of your rights. Thanks very much. Thank you, Pat. So true. When you go to the internet for a weather report, what does it give you? Next seven days. Are they accurate? No. no, because they update it every day.